Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature Your Door, and I'm here in Roanoke, Virginia, in the heart of the Appalachians. And in my hands here today, I have a hognose steak. My friend Kayla was kind enough to let me handle this snake, and she shared a whole lot about him. And she's going to do an episode later talking about why this makes such a great first pet if you're interested in snakes. My interest in the hognose is that you can find them virtually anywhere in the United States. There are four main species, and you can find them pretty much across the United States. So you're very, very likely to find one of these hognose species outside your door. So stay tuned for this episode where I'll talk about this fascinating, unique, and interesting looking snake and its amazing behaviors and a little bit about its biology. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So the hognose snake is a really interesting snake to see. And I didn't want to emphasize that this is a captive bred snake. And if you're interested in keeping snakes on your own to have at home, it's best to never take native snakes and get a captive bred. Also, you need to check local community and state laws and reg regulations concerning the keeping of native or captive or exotic snakes uh, in your home. The hognose snake is unique in North America because it's the only snake that has a distinctly upturned nose. It gives it a really interesting and unique look. Hognose snakes in a natural environment can come in a great deal of color patterns, but all hognose snakes can be identified by this upturned nose. Another detail, if you look closely at the scales on this snake, you can see that each one has a distinct keel. The presence of the keels on a snake or on the scales can help identify the species. And it's called a keel because it's a protrusion just like the keel on a boat. For example, native to Virginia, we have both the rough green snake and the smooth green snake. And these two species can be distinguished by the presence of keels on their scales. So rough green snakes have keeled scales like this one, while smooth green snakes do not. There are four species of hognose snakes in the United States. This, of course, was the western or plain snake. There's also the eastern hognose, the Mexican hognose, and the southern hognose. And they all come in a great variety of color patterns and morphs. Here in the Appalachian Mountains, I've encountered the eastern hognose snake, and it's unique in itself, and especially because of its very, very unique and very specific diet. The scientific name of the eastern hognose is Heterodon platyrhinus. If you break down the genus name, Heterodon, hetero means different, and don means tooth. And it refers to the fact that the hognose is a rear fanged snake with two teeth in the back, which makes it very different from the other snakes. The species name, platyrhinos, the word platy means broad and rhinos means snout, so it's very aptly named for its broad snout, otherwise known as a hognose. One of the really cool things about the eastern hognose and makes it really unique among snake kingdom, is that the eastern hognose feeds almost exclusively on toads. Toads are the only thing that you'll find in its diet. It may add in a few salamanders to its diet as well, but for the eastern hognose, and many of the hognoses across the United States, the uh, toad is the preferred food. Elsewhere in the United States, depending on the availability of toads, these snakes will also feed on amphibians and also feed on rodents. And many of the captive bred hognose snakes can do very, very well on thawed frozen pinkies. Though I've heard that some people, especially if they've got a native, 
we'll need to rub the pinky first with some salamander or toad scents before they'll take it, but most of them get used to taking pinkies. These hognose snakes prefer to live in sandy, loose soils where they can burrow, and the snout there is especially designed for burrowing. The snout enables them to burrow in the ground and where they'll also use abandoned passageways of different small mammals and rodents. The head and nose is specifically designed for pushing through loose earth and sand and burrowing. Besides their unique look, besides their upturned nose and their fascinating look, hognose snakes are infamous for the bizarre behaviors that they will produce as defensive displays. And the main defensive display, the first thing they'll do if they're encountered and disturbed and think they might be the subject of a predator, they will puff themselves up and hiss in a behavior called the bluff behavior. This is a defense against predation, and the hog nose will inflate its body and neck and spread its neck out to look just like a cobra. It'll hiss, it will strike with its mouth closed, and this strike is more like a headbutt, but more rarely they may strike with their mouth open. But they're really not planning to bite you. They're just trying to scare you. Unfortunately, this uh, bluff behavior makes people think they might be a poisonous snake like a copperhead, and it's led their to their demise. It's never a proper thing to kill any snake, and it's actually illegal in most states. But the hognose snake, most fascinating di display, and one that should earn it an Academy Award, is its uh, feigning of death. The first thing it'll do, and this is a last, last resort for the snake, if it thinks its predator is going to eat them, it will pretend to be dead. First, go through a writhing and a frantic motion where it appears to be in great pain. And then it will flip over on its back, hang its tongue out, open its mouth, extrude its cloaca, and even poop or release a foul-smelling material to make the whole thing really look dead. Open mouth, tongue hanging out, cloaca extended on its back. And the funniest part of this is that if you try to flip them back over again, they'll say no, and they'll insist that they're actually dead and flip themselves back over on their backs again. Another interesting fact about hognose snakes, maybe that some people don't know, is that technically, they're both venomous and poisonous. And venomous and poisonous have, mean different things. And venomous means that you can strike and bite and you'll inject harmful venom into your attacker. Poisonous means if you eat it, it can make you sick. Technically, hognose snakes are venomous because they have these grooved rear fangs. And when they bite a salamander or a toad, and partially swallow it live, they'll use that to sort of chew in a mild toxin that's in their saliva. They're not hypodermic needle-like injectors like in a copperhead or a rattlesnake. Now what about poisonous? Well, they're considered poisonous because they take in a lot of the toxins that toads and salamanders have naturally and incorporate them into their flesh. So in this way, the, the hognose snake is both venomous and poisonous. Overall, the hognose snake, as far as humans are concerned, is a very harmless snake, and it's just such an interesting and relatively docile of all the snakes. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed seeing and learning about the hognose snakes. Remember, I cover all things nature. Check out my playlists. I have everything from sea life to amphibians, reptiles, fungi, and trees. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.